In the Beginning Sikh Kedah Malay Peninsula 1953 What the hell is this? Wan Shah wonders to himself glancing at the sudden emergence of red rose rashes that sprouted out of nowhere on the back of his arms like a bunch of mushrooms after a rainy, chilly, cold evening. Damn, they are really itchy, he thinks to himself as he continues to struggle to make his way through the thick jungle vines that are the only thing between him and home which is faintly visible in the distance. It's not the usual route back for he is scurrying at a frantic pace constantly looking over his shoulder to ensure no other person or thing is following him back. Obviously not strolling, while not quite running either, Wan Shah tries to maintain a constant fast pace while avoiding making any sudden noises either. He just needs to get back quickly and quietly. Mana orang tua ni? wonders Asma, squinting as she tries to adjust her eyesight to the bright moonlight as she sits by the serambi of the stilted wooden home that she shares with her husband and two-year-old son. Such designs were abodes are still commonplace throughout rural Malaya in the early 1950s, especially in yet developed remote areas which are still prone to monsoon season flooding. Also, the spacious area below the house is suitable for the rearing of poultry and cultivation of herbs for self-consumption, not to mention storage of other basic necessities such as logs, grains and other daily consumables. Practical and sensible, such is the simple life in much simpler times, especially for kampung folk who reside far from the action up in the north. No Patani liberation insurgents here, at least not yet, hopefully not ever. A loud thud is heard as one shah trips over some fallen branches as it makes his way out of the vines and into a clearing that's only a shot away from home. The earth gleefully welcomes the arrival of his face with a glorious splash of mud. Tui! He spits out bits of grass and soil that manage to make their way into his mouth. Great, a broken tooth. One shah grits whatever's left of his teeth as the pain becomes gradually more and more severe. The rashes have now grown to the size of large warts, about the size of a thumb, tender and pinkish, and are somewhat pulsating with his every heartbeat. On his knees as he struggles to get back up, panicked, he hurriedly unbuttons his shirt and looks down towards his chest and abdomen, now in a similar state to that of his arms. His heartbeat increases pace. One of the growths on his right arm combusts with pus and blood, oozing out from the cavity while tiny bits of what looks like flesh is set free. Then another on his left arm, and another from his chest. In silent screams with his eyes closed tight, one shah tries with all his might not to scream, not wanting to draw the attention of whoever or whatever it was that was apparently falling back. Ah! He can withstand it no more as numerous growths begin to pop, one after the other. His eyes wide open, bulging and bloodshot as he exhales the loudest scream of his life. Dup, 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 his heart rate paces like a locomotive and the screaming continues. Abang, Asma calls out from where she sits, in response to a series of screams that came from the distance. Knowing that her son is fast asleep, especially at this time of the night, she quickly gets up and makes her way out to the clearing, heading in the direction of where those screams came from. It sure sounded like him, and it sure sounded like he was in severe pain. Abang, where are you? What's going on? Asma calls out frantically as she runs out in the dark. Dub, 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 dub. Asma sees a body sprawled on the ground, face down, covered in blood. As she approaches it, the stench, similar to that of a rotting carcass, quickly fills the air. Abang, what's going on? Asma screams in panic as she uses one hand to cover her nose from the awful smell while using the other to turn the body around. Asma starts to cry in shock and disbelief at the sight of what seems to be her dead husband. Wanshao opens his eyes. A patch of tall grass a few meters away starts to ruffle. 